Lay me, old King Cole, that I would join with you. All our hearts, I don't know the rest of the lyrics. <clears throat> Hi, fans of high quality entertainment. Today, I'm going to tell you, the viewer, my 10 favorite progressive rock singers from number 10 to number one. And there might be a surprise in there, a surprise or two, maybe three. So being serious now, because progressive rock is serious, unless you're listening to Jethro Tull's Thick as a Brick. And I've made a uh, Spotify playlist for, you know, any of these singers that you've never heard of, and if you want to check them out on my playlist. So, starting with, uh, oh, actually, first I, I want to say that, that, first of all, I have not heard every progressive rock band <laughs> that, that maybe you have. So, just remember that to begin with. Even though I love progressive rock, I haven't heard every band. Uh, there's some that didn't make my list, but I absolutely love. For instance, Steve Hackett. I didn't even know the guy could sing. But uh, Glenn Kellaway from The Basement let me, uh, you know, when we did our CD exchange, one of his albums, and I really love his vocals. And then there's Frank Zappa, although I don't really consider him progressive rock. I consider him, you know, he, he would do all genres of music, but I love Frank Zappa's vocals and Ike Willis, of course, in the band and other musicians he, he had. Kate Bush, love her vocals. And uh, a Canadian artist, Jane Sibri, who I feel did some pretty wacky, progressive kind of music. But here we go with number 10. Now this is a new one. This is once again from the CD exchange with Glenn. And the first time I heard this band, the, the first couple of times I, I played the album, I... I didn't know what to think of it, but now I've become a fan of Eloy. And so their singer, guitarist, Frank Bornman, he has a, you know, he has a German accent, so when he's singing, he's singing <laughs> with his German accent, and there's just something, he's not the greatest singer, but he's not a bad singer either. He's a good singer, but like I'm saying, he's not a great singer. But there's just something about the, the German accent and his vocals and the way he sings uh, that just grabs my heart. And so, yeah, number 10 is Frank Bornman. And so the song I've chosen in my playlist is called Decay of Logos from Ocean in 1977. And the band Eloy, they do some pretty heavy stuff. I've been checking out some of their other albums. And so I think I'll be buying more of their albums. Number nine, uh, you know, a year a year ago he would not have been on my list. Not that I didn't like him or the band he's in. But once again, because of the CD exchange, I have become a bigger fan of the Moody Blues than I was before. And in fact, I now own all seven. I know they they had one early album that was more. It wasn't progressive rock. I don't think I'll ever buy that one, but starting with Days of Future Past, I have all of the first seven Moody Blues albums. And maybe someday I'll do a rank and review of just these seven albums. But anyway, Justin Hayward is my number nine choice, even though, you know, John Lodge has a very nice has very nice vocals too and other members of the band. And the song I've chosen is The Story in Your Eyes from 1971, which I'm sure most of you have heard of. But yeah, he, he just has a, a really, really nice voice. Number eight. I would say, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven of these singers would not have been on my top ten list like a year ago. So number 
8 is Stephen Wilson. That's right, his solo career and with his band Porcupine Tree. Once again, he doesn't have uh, an amazing vocal, or he's not an amazing singer, but he has a really nice voice, and uh, it just suits the music that he does. And, you know, sometimes his, his vocals are more impressive than other times. Sometimes they're just good, and other times they're really good, you know, depending on the song. But the song I've chosen is The Raven Who Refused to Sing from 2013, which is magnificent. Excellent vocals by uh, Stephen Wilson. So check that out if you haven't heard it on my Spotify playlist. The link will be uh, pinned in the comment section below. Below. Number seven, once again, he would not have been on my list, but he is now from Marillion. And no, it's not Fish. It is Steve Hog Hogarth. Hogarth. I never say that name. And I've chosen the song Murder Machines from their latest album, An Hour Before It's Dark. Once again, he's totally different than the original singer for Mer Marillion, Fish. But he's just as good, it, well, almost, I guess, almost as good as Fish <laughs> for me. And he's got quite a good range. He uses his falsetto sometimes. And uh, yeah, I re really like his vocals. So number seven, Steve Hogarth. Number six, total respect to Mr. Phil Collins. Not only is he an amazing drummer, all those years with Genesis and solo, but the guy can sing. You know, I, I didn't really care too much for his solo career. It was a bit too poppy for me. But, you know, the a lot of the Genesis years, he was amazing. And I've chosen the song Mama from 1983. Number five. Once again, he would not have been on my list last year. But I've always really liked his vocals. And I appreciate them even more because they've been buying more of Procol Harem's album. And the song I've chosen by him is uh, just a section of In Hell Twas In I. And the song is, the section I've chosen is Look Into Your Soul. But I also wanted to give a little shout out to Matthew Fisher, who was in the band in their early years. He didn't sing on too many tracks, but when he did, I actually, <laughs> as much as I like uh, Gary Brooker, I even like Matthew Fisher's vocals more. But the thing is, he didn't sing as much as uh, Gary Brooker. But anyway, Gary Brooker, such a soul, soulful uh, singer, and he always gets to your heart. And so, yeah, that's number five. Number four, I did not know this guy was so talented. I just thought he was maybe like a, a one-hit wonder and a little on the crazy side. Arthur Brown. You might know him from his uh, big 60s hit, Fire, Arthur Brown's uh, The Crazy World of Arthur Brown. And then later on, in the early 70s, he was with a band called Kingdom Come, his band. And so I've chosen Sunrise from their debut album, from 1971. His vocal range, once again, you know, the first time you hear him, it's overly dramatic. And it's almost uh, like a Broadway kind of a, a vocal. Uh, but he can sing sweet. He can, he can scream like amazing, like, like a cool scream. And uh, so, yeah. So I've chosen the song Sunrise. And there's also awesome guitar work by Andrew Dalby in this song. You should... I, I wish all of you that love progressive rock music, you know, a, a little on the crazy side, should check out Arthur Brown's Kingdom Come. Their first three albums are amazing. Now, number three, you, you probably thought it was him singing at the start of this video, but it wasn't. That was me. Peter Gabriel, of course, him in Genesis and then in his solo career, just, uh, once again, a singer that can really touch your soul sometimes, especially 
all of his amazing vocals on Supper's Ready, but I've chosen the song The Carpet Crawlers from 1974. Number two. Now this guy, if you had told me even a few weeks ago, he's going to be on your list as the number two progressive rock singer, I would have said, you're crazy. It is Fish. Yes, the original singer for Marillion. He did four albums with them. The last two, uh, well, uh, Misplaced Childhood, but especially Clutching at Straws. It took me a, a second to think of it. Yeah, Clutching at Straws is probably my favorite Marillion album that I've heard. I've heard quite a few at the moment, but there's still more I need to hear. Yeah, his vocals really get to my soul. If you haven't heard Fish or Marillion, uh, I really suggest you listen to Misplaced Childhood and the final album he did with Marillion, Clutching at Straws. Just totally amazing. The songwriting by him, the lyrics he writes are way, way above average. I'm usually not always focusing on lyrics, but with uh, Fish singing, I am. I'm really l listening to what he's saying, and, and I'm understanding it, even though it's not your typical, you know, rhyming kind of lyrics. He's just amazing. But number one for me, with Fish being pretty close to number one, actually, but number one is still, and probably always will be, John Anderson of Yes. Uh, his, his vocals on so many songs really get to me, and... There's been many times I've gotten very teary-eyed and even cried listening to him sing. Especially the, uh, I think the song I've chosen is Awaken for the Spotify playlist. Especially the end of Awaken, the last couple of lines that he sings, always really gets to me. And I know it gets to other people too. And so, yeah. John Anderson of Yes and Solo is my all-time favorite progressive rock singer. But... I'm sure there's, you know, somebody's going to say, you for, how about so-and-so, or you forgot so-and-so. But like I said, I haven't heard every progressive rock band out there. And also, maybe you have a, a favorite progressive rock singer, but he's not one of my favorites. It's just the way it, way it goes. We all have different tastes. So remember that. So I would love your thoughts on who, who you think are the best progressive rock singers. And I hope you do check out my Spotify playlist. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.